to that we are going to discuss about the inflammation uh, inflammation is a localized reaction intended to neutralize control or eliminate the offending agent to prepare the site for repair five cardinal signs of inflammation are there they are redness warmth that is heat swelling pain loss of function chemical mediators histamine released by mast cell at the site of injury causes vasodilatation and vascular permeability kinins are responsible to attract neutrophils prostaglandin gas increased vascular permeability there is three phase of inflammation phase 1 inflammatory response it occurs in 3 to 5 days it is uh, in the phase 1 that is inflammatory response transient vasoconstriction occurs immediately after injury followed by vasodilatation and increased capillary permeability which result in redness swelling and warm the exudate consists of plasma plasma proteins and solute wbc etc migrate into the tissues resulting in a pressure of fluid on the nerve wings the leukocyte are responsible for engulfing the offending organism for removing cellular debris phase 2 repair and regeneration phase 1 was inflammatory response in this uh, first there will be transient vasoconstriction or vasoconstriction just after the injury then there will be vasodilatation and uh, due to vasodilatation capillary permeability increases and result in redness swelling and warm the next the exudate exudate consists of plasma plasma protein wbc these uh, exudate migrate into the tissues resulting in pressure of fluid on nerve endings pressure of fluid on nerve endings create pain and the loss of function leukocytes are responsible for engulfing offending organs and removing cellular debris phagocytosis by macrophages phase 2 is repair and regeneration uh, 2 to 8 weeks it is characterized by new collagen formation these fibers are laid down in a disorganized manner to make scar but the link between the fibers is weak repair and regeneration phase there will be new collagen formation these fibers are laid down in disorganized manner to make scar but the link between fibers is weak thus new tissue is susceptible to disruption or aggressive activity phase 3 remodeling and maturation it happen in months to years in this phase the tissue continues to remodel strengthen and improve its cellular organization the increase in the organization of the collagen fibers and the bones become stronger exudate the fluid is involved in inflammatory edema is known as exudate uh, exudate can be of four types serous exudate fibrous fibrinous exudate purulent exudate hemorrhagic exudate the fluid involved in inflammatory edema is known as exudate serous exudate is water like exudate seeing minor injury fibrinous exudate contain fibrin purulent exudate is creamy white exudate formed from dead neutrophils seeing bacterial infection hemorrhagic exudate is bloody red exudate bone healing uh, bone healing is a complex and dynamic process of replacing devitalized and mixed cellular structures and tissue layers type of forms acute wound heals without any complication within the expected time frame surgical wound and trauma wounds are example chronic wound will have an underlying pathology or infection causes wound or interface with healing process example diabetic ulcer and pressure ulcer we can look at the questions which is following is incorrect about the bed sore what option a mobilization will affect bed sore Uh, moisture will affect bed sore friction force will affect bed sore these three are the correct statement nutritional status does not affect bed sore in nutrition also also affect so for d is the correct answer next question a 65 old patient admitted in a long time care facility has developed a pressure ulcer on assessment the nurse found that the bone is visible 
and palpable on the bone set the next know that the stage of crystal cell is stage 4 next is wound healing process in the healing by primary intention no or little scar tissue for example surgical wound next is less healing by secondary intention marked loss of tissue edges of the wound are too far and won't get closed naturally through granulation and epithelization for example lacerated wound pressure ulcers and traumatic injury healing by tertiary intention is characterized by delayed wound closure this result in granulation of wound edges characterized by edema infection exudate from the wound and excessive scar formation four stages of wound healing hemostasis inflammation proliferation maturation hemostasis causes coagulation inflammation causes destroys bacteria and remove debris proliferation fills and covers the wound maturation the tissue gains strength and flexibility of wound healing can progress backward or forward depending on the internal and external patient condition hemostasis is the brief period of vasoconstriction as an attempt to stop bleeding it begins at the onset of the injury and its objective is to stop bleeding blood vessel constrict to restrict the blood flow platelets stick together and adhere to the subepithelium subendothelial surface of the epithelial wall of the blood vessel in order to seal the brain after this the first fibrin gland begins to adhere about 60 seconds as the fibrin mesh begins the blood is transformed from liquid to gel through coagulation next question uh, while assessing uh, mr gupta with the bread and scale we know that bread and scale is used for assessing pressure ulcer attain was 8 which indicates 8 score is indicate very high next the key points we have studied is Red vessels constrict to restrict the blood flow during hemostasis stage of wound healing. Inflammation or exudative phase of wound healing is from onset to wound. Day 1 to day 4, contraction of wound margins are covering epithelization. Of course, during proliferation stage of wound healing. Cervical wound is an example of healing with a primary intention. Lacerated wound results a traumatic injury. Or examples of healing with the secondary intention. Type of wound debridement. Uh, the goal of debridement is to remove all the devitalized tissue from the wound bed to promote wound healing. There are five methods of debridement are given below. First is mechanical debridement, which is the process of removal of damaged tissue or foreign objects um, uh, from a wound by physical force. Chemical or enzymatic debridement, topical application of proteolytic substance, example enzymes, can assist in removal of devitalized tissue from wound. Then sharp debridement, it is the scissors or scalpel used for the removal of necrotic foreign material from the wound. Autolytic debridement, debridement useful in pressure ulcers, in the crossing, uh, used to cover the wound. The face, this facilitate naturally available enzymes in the wound to digest the vital tissues. Uh, biologic debridement or mango debridement therapy. Introduction of live disinfected mango that is slide away into the non healing skin and the soft tissue of the human for the purpose of removing of the necrotic tissue in the wound. Next, there is gangrene. Gangrene is a type of tissue death due to lack of blood supply and oxygen. Gangrene is usually external affecting extremities and it can affect internal tissue. There are two types of gangrene, dry gangrene and wet gangrene. Dry gangrene begins in the distal part of the limb due to ischemia and spread upward. Most commonly affect the limbs, commonly due to arterial occlusion called Reynolds disease or Bugger's disease. The organ is dry, shrink, and black in color. Bacteria fail to survive. 
ਐ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਫੋਨ ਨੂੰ ਮੋਰ ਵਿਦ ਦਿਸ ਇਸ ਦ ਕਾਲਰ ਡਾਈਂਗ ਗ੍ਰੀਨ ਦੈਨ ਵਿਦ ਗੈਂਗਰੀ ਵਿਦ ਗੈਂਗਰੀ ਇਸ ਆਲਸੋ ਕਾਲਡ ਗੈਸ ਗੈਂਗਰੀ ਸਮ ਇਟ ਅਫੈਕਟ ਨੈਚੁਰਲੀ ਦ ਮੋਸਟ ਟਿਸ਼ੂ ਸਚ ਐਸ ਓਰਲ ਕੈਵਿਟੀ ਬਾਊਲ ਸਰਵਿਕਸ ਲੈਂਡਸ ਐਟਸੈਟਰਾ ਮੋਰ ਕਾਮਨਲੀ ਅਫੈਕਟ ਦਾ ਬਾਊਲ ਕਾਮਨਲੀ ਡਿਊ ਟੂ ਬਲੋਕੇਜ ਆਫ ਵੀਨਸ ਸਪਲਾਈ ਐਂਡ ਲੈਸ ਕਾਮਨਲੀ ਡਿਊ ਟੂ ਬਲੋਕੇਜ ਆਫ ਆਰਟੀਰੀਅਲ ਸਪਲਾਈ ਡਾਇਬੀਟਿਕ ਫੂਟ ਬੈਡ ਸੋਰ ਗੈਸ ਗੈਂਗਰੀ ਗੈਸ ਗੈਂਗਰੀ ਆਫ ਕੋਰਸ ਉਹ ਆਰਗੇਨਿਸਮ ਮੋਰ ਸੌਫਟ ਟੋਲਨ ਐਂਡ ਰੋਟਨ ਐਂਡ ਡਾਰਕ ਗੈਂਗਰੀਨ ਫੇਵਰਸ ਬੈਕਟੀਰੀਆ ਗਰੋਥ ਨੈ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਫਾਰਮ ਆਫ ਪੈਕ ਗੈਂਗਰੀ ਕੈਸਟ ਬਾਈ ਗ੍ਰਾਮ ਪੋਜ਼ਿਟਿਵ ਅਨਾਰੋਬਿਕ ਬੈਕਟੀਰੀਆ ਕਲੋਜ਼ ਟੂ ਦੀ ਸਪੀਸੀਜ਼ ਇਸ ਨੋਨ ਐਸ ਗੈਸ ਗੈਂਗਰੀ ਦੈਨ ਨਾਓ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਡਿਸਕਸ ਸਮ ਐਮਸੀਕਿਊ ਕੁਐਸਚਨਸ inflammation wound healing uh, severe generalized edema is called severe generalized edema is called uh, what is according to me what uh, anasarka will be maybe the answer i am not sure ah uh, it is anasarka when edema is massive and generalized it is called anasarka Mm. it is caused by variety of clinical condition like heart failure renal failure liver failure or the problem with the lymphatic system and swelling is mainly caused by abdominal retention of body fluids in extracellular space and body tissue due to this anasarca is also known as dropsy massive edema generalized edema in anasarca the inflammation is widespread throughout the body next question which of the following is not a plasma derived chemical mediator plasma derived chemical mediator which is not a i am no i don't know the answer let me check cytokines are cytokines is not a plasma derived chemical mediator thionine complement component coagulation proteins are plasma derived Mm, cytokines are secreted by cytokines are secreted by all of the above is the answer neutrophil b lymphocyte and epithelial cell which of the following increases vascular immunity during acute inflammation during acute inflammation uh, histamine and cytokines increases the vascular immunity mm. mechanism behind the characteristic feature of acute inflammation vasodilatation and increased muscular permeability the classical substances that increase the sensitivity of pain receptors by enhancing pain provocative effect of radicamine is called prostaglandin i uh, i levels of prostaglandin are reduced in response to injury or infection cause inflammation which is associated with the symptoms of redness swelling pain and fever it is important part of body's normal healing process in contrast mdc may face analgesic effect which of the following is a substance that to decrease the pain transmission and cause inflammatory response which uh, pain transmission decrease and it may be this endorphin all of the following are evidences of infection expected elevated wbc is a sign of infection we all know that purulent discharge is also sign of infection increased leukocyte is also in infection so the primary intention will be the answer hemorrhage with the collection of blood in the soft tissue is called collection of blood in the um, soft tissue is called hematoma thick yellow discharge from the wound is known as thick yellow discharge is known as purulent clear and watery discharge is called serous sangigus is the fresh blood cirrhosis mm, sanguis is a leakage is thin and watery and pink in color purulent is 
so leakage from won't appear milky uh, it is generally grey green or yellow which of the type of x-ray contain fibrin fibrin is fibrin contain fibrin substrate yes. next an opening of the surgical wound edges is called opening of surgical wound edges is called dehiscence wound dehiscence is the surgical compilation in a wound um, ruptures along the surgical incision it may be due to two types suturing or loose improper suturing sneezing buffing wound acceleration surgical incision opens and abdominal organ protrude come out of the incision that is evisceration Ehens is the wound, wound uh, along with the surgical incision, um, the wound ruptures. In surgical evisceration, uh, the surgical incision opens and abdominal organs protrude out of the incision. Diffuse porcelain inflammation of tissue is called the diffuse porcelain inflammation of tissue is called the cellulitis. Cellulitis is a bacterial infection of underlying layers of the skin and site of infection turns red and swelling and then it can be purulent or non purulent cellulitis is diffused where a sepsis is localized next question we can discuss in the next video